One big disclaimer, we are not professional tent repair people. We have no clue what we're doing. Nope. No clue. Other than I know how to sew and he knows how to put things together. Yeah. That's the only professional piece <laughs> of this project. Hi everybody, welcome to the Thunderbird Handcrafted. My name is Genevieve, this is my husband DJ, and today we are repairing a tent. If you like our videos, come over here, you're not even in the screen, please hit subscribe, and you can skip ahead with the timestamps below. We hope you enjoy this video of us repairing this tent with our Sailrite fabricator, which is new to the Creativity Corner. So now we're ready to start the sewing part of this. The healing part might be that my marriage stays intact. So I'm gonna go over what we're using a little bit. Um, we're using some umbrella uh, fabric from Sail Right. That's what we're using as the top of the tent. Um, I'm using a number 20 needle and I'm using my manufacturer walking foot. Um, I'm also using my magnet to keep my um, seam allowance where I need it to be and I'm also using you'll see at the top of my machine I'll show it to you it's so magic um, and it's basically a coating um, I'll show you in a second that goes over my thread um, to keep it uh, mildew protectant UV protectant um, I'm using a, a 90 um, tax thread in my bobbin and in my uh, main uh, stitch. To start, DJ and I had to take the old roof off. So I got the ripper out, DJ got a vice grip, I took the stitches out, and he took out the old grommets so that we wouldn't be sewing over them when we were replacing the roof. <music> Here we go. We're going to piece these panels together. Because Deej and I did not have a space um, big enough, the creativity corner is very small. We had to move my seal right into our bedroom and use the length of our bed for laying the tent out to cut the panels as well as eventually you'll see when we get ready to sew. However, we had a little friend who you'll see throughout this video really did not like that we were taking over where he likes to sleep. So you'll see Mr. Apollo, our Husky Australian Shepherd mix in the background in a lot of the shots. Um, so enjoy all the times he was just trying to get our attention. You gotta get down, come on, get down. I promise you that will not be the last time you see me remove him from our bed. I need to, I need to straddle the, the bed so that he gets it. To give you an idea of what we needed to do here is the Sunbrella marine grade fabric that we purchased from Sailrite is 60 inches across. We needed to cut 158 inch length pieces that were 40 inches across. So we used our bed. DJ went and got a piece of plywood then. I tried to make a bed for Apollo that he would be happy with over in the corner. 
you'll see that he was not happy but we had to cut this down this was the part i will say that tested our marriage the most uh dj who is a mechanic by trade um woodworker also uh he had all these ideas about how to measure it and i was like in my head the sewist in me already knew what we needed to do to cut out this fabric so again this would be the the very testy part for us we had purchased wax pencils from sale right as well in yellow that was really helpful to mark the fabrics in lengths and be able to measure them out to exactly where we needed to be i will say that for dj and i this is how we work really well together when he comes in with his logic and i come in with the imagination uh everything always works out in our favor so we ended up compromising Apollo, however, did not want to compromise. Down the bed, you over there. No. That's not what we talked about yesterday, Mama. <laughs> we specifically said. No. That you were going to sew today. No. And now I'm going to watch. <laughs> I love you, but you can't jump up right now. No. No. Uh, <laughs> we had a conversation Look last it. night. Look over here. Look. <laughs> oh, it's so slippy. Oh, John. <laughs> no. This is your Betty for today. No. Are you kicking me out? How are you kicking me out of the den? Stop. Should I start cutting? This is how it's going to be. <laughs> I love you, but you, you are such a pain. Oh, child, toddler. Stop. Stop. Where you put a hole in your tent. So after trying to cut 
that out on our our bed without any type of sturdy table my husband uh, who is wonderful and innovative was like we're going to get a piece of plywood so we brought a piece of plywood up our very narrow farmhouse stairs <laughs> and used the plywood on top of our bed needless to say Apollo was not happy about this as well uh, so you'll see several times where he decides he does not want that plywood to be there this made cutting a heck of a lot easier it also made sewing uh, later on you'll see a lot easier as well then my husband decided he was going to try to um, explain to me how we were going to sew this which didn't go over well at first but he had he had some good ideas so we transitioned and moved the sewing machine around Apollo as you can see is very confused doesn't know what's happening to his Betty and I think he does hop up on it where are you to be behind me full <laughs> he has to inspect it actually might make sense for us to turn it around and have like the, prep the back area. seat. We'll, we'll play with it. We'll see what works. Okay. Let's not worry about that now. Let's finish cutting yeah. and get a puppy off the table. Dude. Hey, you. Come here. Come here. Come on. Just take it down. Good boy. He's like. Well, I'm just saying, I didn't particularly like when Dad did the, the bedroom floor. It didn't work out for me. It didn't work out. And I don't know that Betty doesn't look very soft. I, I don't like the Betty so far, Mama. Betty doesn't just, look soft at I'm all. just saying. Okay, it doesn't look like there's a place for snuggles. No. I don't, I don't think I like it. We get there eventually. Eventually. <laughs> All right. So you're going to mark, right? And I'm going to hold. So you're, we're on the wrong side. I love how you strategically, like, well, I'm not marking because if this is wrong, it's all on you. And exactly. I, and I got it on tape. Exactly. I love how you're like. Exactly. Crossing your T's and dotting your I's. <laughs> Listen, honey, it's our anniversary weekend. None of the arguments need to be my fault. <laughs> That sewist thing is that like a new term or it's a sew artist so it's a new term it's a it's a fairly artsy, new term farty <laughs> yeah uh-huh none of the arguments are gonna be my fault <laughs> I just never heard it. I, I've heard seamstress. Yes, but I'm not a seamstress. I'm not making clothes. True. Which is the opposite term of a tailor. Okay, there's also, so how about this? What about a tailor? What is a tailor? A tailor makes clothes. They makes clothes. Yeah. A seamstress fixes clothes. No, a seamstress also makes clothes. It's just the female male terms. Tailor is a male term. Now, see, that's ridiculous. Yeah, well, but that, it's going back to old English terminology. Okay. So, if I was a dude, I go to a tailor. Yes, just like if you're a dude, you go to a barber instead of a hairstylist. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. I do like the unisex terms where it's like, it doesn't matter yes. what you are. So, a sewist, that's another reason why. Because there are men who make bags, who make drapes, who make... Who are sewists. Who are sewists. 
Is that... Is that more acceptable? Because now there's men included in this. No, story. I'm not. <laughs> Listen. You are but, the most feminist yeah. counterpart I know. So yeah. I, I agree. I always get thrown under the bus. I so at the end of the cutting, we had four panels, 160 inches long by 40 inches wide. We then had to do a seam to put all the four of those panels together to make the complete roof, which we'll get to talk about next. So that's what we've cut. Finally, Apollo let us uh, cut the, the rest of it. Um, and we're gonna try to piece these together. Uh, and he's going back, DJ is going back uh, to the campsites to load wood. So we have campers arriving today at about two o'clock. Then we're off on an adventure for our anniversary dinner, if we're still married. Happy 20th anniversary. <laughs> um, very typical for us to do something on our anniversary weekend that is not the conventional, but the um, stressor, the thing that's gonna stress us both out. So it's very common for us. So I'm gonna get to sewing. I'm gonna point my camera down so you can see that. I'm gonna first point out um, how I have my thread set up. So this is how my thread is set up. I, the thread is through this wax. So it's going through there and coating the thread with the mildew um, protectant and UV protectant. I have, I need to use this hand. I have this here where I could also um, put uh, oil in there to lubricate my thread, but I don't need to do that. Um, I just wanna coat it with that UV protectant. Um, the thread is already UV protectant, and uh, but I we really want the mildew protectant because it is a, a glamping tent. So that's what we're doing, and you can you can pretty much see what I'm doing. Uh, I do not know the name of this seam. Don't ask me what this is called, but I'm doing. It's like basically an overlap seam. So I'm going. I have a one inch on the one p on the one panel, and then I'm doing. Um, the quarter inch of my foot on the other panel and we're just gonna pray that it's straight in the end my husband was trying to tell me that I should stand to sew because that's what we saw on other videos I do not feel comfortable and I uh, my old lady eyes I don't know how the lady in the video did it because I'm sure she was older than me but she's probably been doing it for years she stood and kept her seam allowance and I tried it and was already messing that up. So we're gonna see how we do here. When it came to the first length, I did pretty good on my own. Uh, just two long pieces of fabric really were not a big deal. I, I could handle that by myself. And you'll see that what I did is I did that first length and then I had to turn it all the way back around again. So I had the seam at the right position so that I could then fold over that seam, uh, which creates almost like a taco effect. It just makes the seams and the roof super sturdy because when we put the tents on in the springtime, we're really pulling them down over the metal frame. So you'll see that this um, stitch that I did decently on my own. Um, so I'm stitching the one length uh, to get that kind of overlap. Uh, and then I'm folding it over on the top one seam and then stitching it again. Well, once I had the one done, it was very difficult for me to do the third one on my own. So I hollered for my 16 year old and obviously Apollo thought I meant him because he obviously had to ex inspect and make himself known that he was wanting to participate in helping. <laughs> um, definitely a working dog even if it's work that he doesn't have posable thumbs to do as you can see 
what we did to get the last two sides onto the roof was my son he stood in front of my sewing machine and kind of helped guide the length and the bulk um, on the left side of me so that I could keep my seam allowance straight but also maneuver um, the bulk of the fabric behind me. So that was extremely helpful and I highly suggest if you decide to tackle this as an amateur, you have someone helping you. At this point, DJ and I have two days into this project. The first day is when we set everything up, ripped the seams, got the roof off the old tent. The second day was when we cut all of our fabric as well as um, sewed the panels for the roof. That's as far as we got uh, that day because it was the day we were going out for our anniversary. Uh, so we took a break for the rest of the day and went to the movies and out to dinner to celebrate. Let's see how it goes. Don't mind my one mistake that I know you'll notice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Dennis, when we were doing it, he was like, Mom, um, I think your seams are supposed to be not like that, but like, like that. Right. Yeah, it's still double stitched, it's just. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. So today we're going to put the hole in for the stove pipe. And we're gonna try to get the sides done today. I mean, we'll go as far as we can go, but that's, those are the two, that's the goal. Um, we have the uh, roof in the sun umbrella canvas from Sailrite, all stitched together. Now it's the matter of getting the roof on. So this is where, this is our stove pipe hole from our last one, which is still, in good condition so we're just going to use that i have to repair this little piece here but we can still piece this right on we just need to cut a hole in the side um in order to do that so that's what we're doing today once we had the main new roof stretched across the frame we took the old tent roof and we stretched that across so that we could find the placement for the hole for the stovepipe. Uh, again, we're not professionals, uh, so this was the easiest way for us to do that. And you'll see it ended up working out pretty well.
Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna patch this piece here that's ripped away from, I'm just gonna take a piece of this, I think, and make a patch and just sew it. Or if we wanna make sure that it's really secure, should we put a binding all the way around this? Just cut some of the threads and see if you can... It's, it's frayed. It's oh, frayed. it's actually cut. Yeah. So, I was thinking about just making a little patch for both sides. Because it's not that big. All the other areas look like it's still, still really good, so... I thought it just came out. No. Let's see here. Pretty sure you can't iron this, so. Yeah, I'm gonna put a couple stitches in it and then finish folding it. Yeah. I don't know, is there a top or a bottom? I'm guessing this is the top because that would make sense why it why it pulled away because it's a little bit you know yeah the top has the canvas over further because the bottom it has the oh uh, yeah and that's that makes sense the sale right is doing what we asked her to do why we got shh about the time that I was forced to patch your jeans because it definitely was fancier than that <laughs> what I'm doing here is I kind of made a frame where I cut the hole out for the stovepipe so I'm basically just stitching down that frame first before we attach the stovepipe on top We're now getting ready to piece the stovepipe hole onto the roof. Uh, it worked out almost uh, perfectly. There was a couple areas where you'll see when we go and put it on the frame that uh, it was a little not straight, a little wonky, but that's okay. It's a DIY project. Also, I apologize for the sound of our very loud air conditioner, but September has its hot and humid days, and this happened to be one of them. All right, we'll see how it ends up. Is our hole where the hole is supposed to be. Here's where you can see that uh, my stitching around the hole was a little crooked and I do have some overlapped areas there, but overall uh, this really isn't an issue for us. Uh, we're just really glad that we were able to one, use the stove pipe piece because both of our uh, campsites right now do have wood stoves in them and we wanted this third site to also have that. Uh, so we're really glad that we are able to still do that. The wood stoves are really great in our campsites for when it turns cooler. Hmm. Yeah, that there kind of that there kind of bothers me, but what are we gonna do? Nothing, this is gonna be the way it is. 
Yeah. Probably folding it twice here. We shouldn't have folded it twice. Probably just once. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Hopefully it, we'll just have to make some folds places, yeah. That's why I'm glad I have extra on the sides. Now we get the big guns out. <laughs> oh, I didn't get that one. <laughs> I didn't get that one on film. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's the reg the uh, old roof? Throw it over it just to see how we did. Not really. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, good. We're good. Okay. I don't know, babe. We can do it. Yeah. I think. Now the tough part. Yes, now it's gonna be the hard part because we do the sides. I had brought the um the marker down and all those clips. I wanna clip it around that piece. Because it has to be taunt right around the thing there, right? Right around the bar. What? I'm gonna. I want to fold that over that piece over it. We'll we'll figure it out when we come out after lunch. Cause I want to do the two long sides next, and leave the front and the back for last. Okay. Okay. Is there a reason? Yes, cause it's to make sure it's straight. Okay. Because this has to have, when we come out, we're gonna have to measure that the amount that's over here and the amount that's over there. Like make sure that the same amount is all along both front and back. And then the same way over here, it has to be the same amount wrapped around or it's gonna be crooked. After we ate lunch, we were in much better spirits and we came out and started clipping the sides of the tent. Uh, I purchased these longer clips from Sailrite so that we, at least one bag of them, so that we would have enough of clips total with my regular sewing clips to clip the roof. Uh, the bottom part of the tent already had a lip that we kept. Uh, that's what DJ was pulling the grommets out of. What we did was we wrapped the roof around that and clipped it. We lined it all up. And so now we're gonna go around the entire tent on both sides and clip it in place. And then haul it up into our bedroom to sew.
next time we do one of these projects, we will definitely need to invest in setting up another camera angle for you because if you could see the fact that this tent is hauled across my entire bedroom and Deej and I needed to figure out how do we get the side that I want to sew without all the clips popping off under the machine and I'm tucked into the corner next to our, my dresser. Uh, so it definitely took a lot of maneuvering and at some points we needed both our 16 year old as well as my father-in-law to come and help us in maneuvering the tent so that I could have it under the machine with the right amount of slack and also someone in front of me guiding it as well to keep the weight of the, the tent not getting in the way of stitching. And so I highly suggest if you're going to try to tackle something like this that you definitely can't do it by yourself. And even if there's two of you, uh, maybe let um, some of your friends or family know that you're about to tackle this and you might be calling them for reinforcements because it was a bear to get this maneuvered in a way that we could sew it properly. Once we get the first hem done along the front part of the side, it was about an inch uh, seam allowance that I did. Then I went and stitched another hem across the top of that flap on the side of our tent. Uh, that was probably about three inches from that first hem across the top, just to make a good flat uh, piece for where the roof connects to the sides. Uh, this was only possible by actually putting a guideline along that edge. So you, you'll see as I'm stitching that there is a yellow line um, down through there. And at some points I'm having to put the entire tent up over my shoulder in order to stitch it. Hey, off. Come on. I know you want to help, but you can't help with this. Okay. We can do this. Once we had both sides of the roof attached to the sides, it was then time to cut our webbing for our D-rings. Uh, there are four sp uh, spots on the tent for D-rings to attach the tent down, to hold the tent down to the platform. And so we purchased uh, heavy duty webbing, nylon webbing from Sailrite, as well as stainless steel D-rings. Each of the pieces of webbing were eight inches long. 
and then folded in half and stitched uh, by my sail right. This went like butter. Uh, the sail right just loves the thicker the better, uh, it seems. And so we made each one of those uh, for both sides of the tent. So we made a total of eight of those um, for all the way around. Maybe we only need six inches. I'm pretty sure we need eight inches. You know, maybe six will do. Oh my god, gonna have to cut that out. Once we had all of the anchor points made, we attached those to each of those areas on the tent, which are mainly where the se seams are, your corners and your two seams. Uh, we also then had purchased uh, a two inch heavy duty webbing as well to go over the top of them, which you're, you're seeing a little bit of that here uh, in this video. Uh, my camera angle isn't that great, so I'm sorry if you can't see it, but basically we tucked in our corners and then over top of that bottom underneath part of our roof, we laid that two inch webbing across the entire length of both sides over top of our anchor points so that uh, it made it real secure. Here we are on day four of the sewing and for some reason I cannot find the video that we took of attaching the front and the back. However, attaching the front and the back did pose its challenges. Main thing that we did is, as you saw, we were getting the tent on the frame that was lowered so that we could clip the front and the back to it. There were uh, screens to go through with that as well, and the sail right did perfectly fine going through that. Once we had the front and the back on, we needed to construct the entire tent just to see where we were at. Uh, and everything looked great. We were really, really proud of ourselves. However, you can see here, even there in the lower left-hand corner, um, from using this tent for one full season prior, there was some wear and tear on the corners and the base. So what we did is we put the tent up and then we took it back down again and we went and created patches for each of the corners of the tent as well. So we had a total of four days uh, repairing and completing this DIY project of repairing our tent.
in the tent. That'll get taken care of by the weather, I forgot. <coughs> wow. We did it. So here on our farm, we partner with Tenter for our glamping sites. We have two signature sites, uh, the PA Dutch Dramen, which is the Pennsylvania Dutch Dream site, and then also the Algonquin Gitagon site. We've been partnering with them since 2018. Uh, but this site will be our third site. And here's our beautiful roof that we just repaired. We use the Sunbrella fabric uh, from Sailrite. Thanks to everybody in the Sailrite Fabricator group for recommending it. We added some hardware. One of our tents, um, one of our newer tents, the PA Dutch tent, that has um, this webbing underneath. So we thought that was a great idea to add with the stainless steel D-rings for when we secure it. Don't mind my strings we haven't we haven't finished it we haven't cut the cut the stitches yet and we kept the stovepipe in place there's some of my mistakes you know I'm first time tent sewer um, but we're really happy with it yeah yeah you really happy with it honey yep looks good Okay, in all of our videos, I share the healing part of the sewing project, and I would say this project, the healing part is, we're celebrating our 20 year wedding anniversary, and we're still married after the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what uh, the roof looked like before. Um, the roof of this tent, for some reason, just got wear and tear mold. Um, this was the chimney pipe area. Uh, and so we decided instead of getting rid of the whole tent because the sides and the front and back were still really good. Well, DJ decided when I said I wanted a Sailrite fabricator. I got a job for you. <laughs> so um, that's that was the plan. Bags and, and fun goodies mm -hmm. are a byproduct <laughs> of I want a sail, Sailrite fabricator. So... This is, this is what we did. And I would say it was pretty fun. We work good as a team. We hope you enjoyed this video of us repairing this tent. Please check out our website so you can see all of our other uh, glamping sites here on our farm. If you would like details as to the different products we used in this uh, episode, please uh, click the details below that has a list of everything we've used. Uh, and. Uh, I guess, happy anniversary, honey. Yeah, happy anniversary.